we promised you a good time and then we pulled the rug out of out from under you and we're like have you thought about death yet today Welcome to Books in the Freezer, a podcast dedicated to the deliciously disturbing world of horror fiction. I'm your host, Stephanie, and today I am joined by my friends, Agatha, the host of the She Wore Black podcast and podcast favorite, author Rachel Harrison, to talk about some read-alikes for some of our favorite artists. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks so much for having me. (laughs) Me too. Excited to chat music and books. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. It's just like a fun hangout. All three of us like music. We're friends. We love horror books. It just seems like it's a good like idea. That, uh, my hope is that it's like that um, picture, that meme that always goes around where it's the three pic- like the three people and someone sitting next to it with a cup of coffee. Like I'm hoping these are the vibes that we're okay. sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, join in the chat. We want your thoughts on tunes to books. Yes. Yeah. So for this, we all picked a different artist, and we are each talking about three books and one of those artist songs that we think would be good read-alikes. So who are you guys talking about today? I chose Japanese Breakfast, which is one of my favorite bands, and I forget how I discovered Japanese Breakfast sometime in... 2016 2017 um the band came on my radar and i've been a huge fan ever since nice for the uninitiated what would you say their vibes are like what is the sound of japanese breakfast it's kind of hard to describe I i mean it's it's alternative indie rock but i think what i love so much about their music is It feels epic and whimsical and cinematic. There's something kind of sweeping about um, the songs. And I think that's part of why I gravitate toward, toward their music and why I think it's a good band for Rita Likes. Yeah. I would, you know, when I listened to the the songs that you sent us, I thought that atmospheric and whimsical were really good combos for them because it. Mm-hmm. it I feel lost in a cloud, a whimsical cloud when I was listening to them. It's very yeah. atmospheric. The lyrics are like very, it's interesting. There's like a juxtaposition of lyrics about grief and um, like growing up and love and love lost but the songs are generally like can be pretty upbeat and so some um my first pick which we'll get into later in heaven it's a it's a heavy song lyrically but listening to it it sounds like if you're not listening to the lyrics you'd be like oh this is fun (laughs) like um I love that too and that's why I I thought about the Sundays like for old people like me who might not otherwise know and who went digging you'll you'll know if you comp it to the Sundays she sounds a lot like them but it was the same thing they would have these dark lyrics or complex lyrics but it would be a very upbeat sound or not even upbeat but more like yeah just the same kind of vibes like the free spirit vibes and I was like the juxtaposition was always so interesting to me and so I love when I love when I see that the postal service does that a lot too yeah Yeah. who are you talking about Agatha I am 100% sure that everyone's going oh she's gonna talk about PJ Harvey (laughs) but I'm not (laughs) And they would be happy. Well, I'm not going to because I did make public that episode that you and I did together where I extensively covered PJ. 
So I feel like people can go listen to that and it's, you know, they'll get, they'll get my fill of PJ, even though that was like, uh, only just touching, touching on her a little bit, not even the whole thing. But, um, and then I really thought about doing Mousy Star because Hope Sandoval was definitely like my girl and still is. But um, yeah. I'm actually going to talk about Blind Melon. They sort of haunt me a little bit because I was at shows all the time in the 90s and early aughts. And I didn't get to see them because they came through Texas mm-hmm. and I had some tests. I couldn't pop over from Austin to Houston um, because I had to study. And he died that night. So he died after the Houston oh, show. So I didn't, they were supposed to come back around and I was like, I'll catch him on the second leg of the tour. And I didn't get to do that. So, you know, oh in gosh. addition to being, you know, one of my favorite bands from the nineties and they are, um, and they stay with me. I still listen to them. Um, their three albums <laughs> is all we got, but it was just one of those things where I never, I never got to, to see them. So I discovered them like, the old, you know, once again, being an old woman, I, uh, I didn't have the interwebs kids. I, we discovered them like radio, MTV, Rolling Stone magazine. I mean, word of mouth, if they open for a band that you saw, you know, you just, that's how we figured things out back then musically. So I'm really glad you picked them because I think my familiarity with them was really only no rain. That's true. True for most people, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um the the only time you see anything else is whenever and the, and usually it is no rain is when you see when you see young people like in their 20s doing those reaction videos which I love to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, look, they're looking at the old people music from the 90s." <laughs> and then you watch them because you want to see how they react. <laughs> so, yeah. It's sort of like Lorelai Gilmore watching Luke watch a movie. <laughs> yeah <laughs> she would love reaction. the train is not going to come out of the screen <laughs> i picked lucy dacus because i mean all of these episodes are just a ploy to get people to listen to my <laughs> spotify top five like i did a taylor swift episode with you um i'm doing this there's possibly a mitski patreon episode coming out in the future like this is just a ploy <laughs> for that um but lucy dacus i think people are probably most familiar with her through Boy Genius, um, which she's a part of with Phoebe Bridgers and Julian Baker, but they're all solo artists that do their own work. I discovered, I can't remember when I discovered Lucy, but it was definitely Night Shift. And I definitely was through, you know, the Spotify algorithm, the like, if you like this, check this out. And I just remembered I loved that song and the way it builds up and then going into her discography and the stuff that she puts out it's just such good storytelling through lyrics and especially her like home video album she just feels like relatable you're like I was this person or I knew this person growing up like it's just such relatable lyricism and she's a great musician she with so. what you sent us it was really clever lyrics so i was really wanting to go and discover more of her myself and her mention of slayer just gave me like oh a connection you know speaking of 90s saw slayer in san antonio in a bar <laughs> like, uh you know way back in the olden days but i was like oh look look at that that's so clever the way she incorporated that in there and her, and her videos made me want to paint. I, I was looking for my watercolors. I was yeah. like, oh, she's inspired me to get my paints out. <laughs> like the one where they're all like painting each other or like the VBS like animated the animated one. one. It was the colors oh, she yeah. was using. I was like, I feel yeah. like painting now. <laughs> I didn't know you painted. I have an art degree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I was an art teacher before I was a librarian. Oh, wow. yeah. I'm very old. <laughs> my student. You're just very cool. You're just like every, you just constantly reveal like some other like cool facet to your backstory. Like when we were planning this podcast episode, she was like, oh, this is a picture of me like in a mosh pit. (laughs) Y'all, I have layers. We we unlock a little more like Agatha lore. Johnny Compton always surprised me because he was talking about Wu-Tang Clan and I was like, 
and I said, oh, I saw Wu-Tang in 1995. And he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm not always, I was, it didn't pop out of the womb at 50. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have a past. <laughs> but we all do. I love figuring it out too. So y'all do too. I'm just saying. Not as cool as yours though. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. I speak for myself, not you, Stephanie. <laughs> I don't mean to to throw to pull you into my nerdy backstory. Oh my goodness. Mine is more like religious culty. So it's like yours is much yeah. cooler. Well, that, <laughs> you had like a I don't want to say religious cult is cool no, it's not. because it's traumatic, but like also to be like it's yeah, it's fascinating. Surface it's level very, is pretty it's cool. Fascinating. I you know? and I'm so glad you did that episode. That was very brave for all of them, everybody involved. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all go listen to that episode. It's funny because we all just kind of laughed about it. It's one of those like trauma things. <laughs> yeah, right. right. What, what do you do except? Rachel wrote a whole book about religious yeah. traumas, <laughs> <laughs> which we'll talk about twice today, I think. This is how relatable you are. We each have comps for you. I thought you were just being nice. <laughs> I was like, oh. Well, you know, I want to be nice to you, but man, they hit home for, I think, a lot of people, yeah. you know. I mean, I know one of the things with Blind Melon is they wrote a lot about this. And since you and I have talked about going to Catholic school, we have we have lots of thoughts, you know, that we understand. Yeah. Is that Rachel lore we didn't know? I went, I was, uh, I didn't go to Catholic school, That's but I was raised right. Catholic and I went to like CCD oh, CCD. and got my confirmation and and all that and then uh got my extra middle name and <laughs> never went back to wait church. is that a part of it yes yeah you get to pick a confirmation I didn't name know that. that's kind of cool yeah <laughs> i just picked i just picked elizabeth i should have picked something crazy but i feel like you can only pick a name of the saint mm. so it's like you can pick Anne or joan mm, that makes sense but i should have picked something if there was like a metal Catholic middle name. I should have picked it. But yeah, see, this is my not cool backstory. <laughs> I got to pick an extra middle name and I went with Elizabeth. <laughs> I picked Angelica as mine because I was like, Angels, Angelica. They let me get away with it too. And they had, it was like some horrible character that I was like, saw in some movie or show or something. I was like, that's cool. I'll go with that, you know, because it was like the, the mean character. <laughs> what was going on when, this is what happens when they have you like say yes i'll be catholic forever when you're like 12 you, know, you don't know what you're doing yeah you know? yeah no we don't even know how to get through nope. school like what are you having us talk about yeah anyway too much responsibility yeah. i was the person like knocking doors and be like if you died today are you 100 percent sure you'd go to heaven do you want to have this conversation at your front door that's a lot to carry as a, as a child. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, are we ready to talk about <laughs> some books? We're going to talk more about this. Now that we just to touch on our religious trauma, and now we'll dive right in. <laughs> just said Listen, I think two out of three of my songs are religious trauma. So there we go. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Fangoria, the world's best horror and cult film magazine since 1979. Listeners can use code Books in the Freezer to get 20% off their order. That includes, of course, merchandise and first time subscriptions and single issues of the magazine. Not only are there tons of articles and interviews about upcoming horror movies, there's a regular segment by Stephen Graham Jones all about slashers called Slasher Nation, so you're going to want a copy. So again, that is code Books in the Freezer, and thank you, Fangoria, for supporting the show. I am going to say I am doing the hits. I am not doing Lucy Dacus deep cuts, <laughs> okay? So... <laughs> These are the hits. So my first one is Night Shift, which, like I said, I think is her most popular song and is how I discovered her. Um, and I paired this with Cackle by an author. I can't remember who wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> I hear she's the bit. No, sorry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Night Shift is a song about dealing with 
a breakup, which is the essential premise for Cackle. And the big lyrics are, you've got a nine to five, so I'll take the night shift and I'll never see you again if I can help it, which is essentially like, you can keep your life. I will change everything about my life because I literally like don't ever want to see you again. And I will change my life even to my detriment as someone who worked the night shift for several years. Like it sucks and it really messes your body up and I had like health issues related to just like working the night shift for several years so it is truly about like I will uproot everything about my life to not have to deal with you which is kind of what sets the scene in Cackle we're following Annie who is moving to a new town at the end of her long-term relationship she moves to a city and takes a teaching job in a small town leaving behind the things she's known and the person she's spent years building her life with. And this is all happening kind of as she's turning 30. So she's dealing with like, this is not what I expected my life to look like. As I'm going into my 30s, I kind of feel like I'm starting over and I had pictured us together. Like I had this clear picture of what my life was supposed to be. And this is not it. And so I just love all of that feeling but there she meets sophie who is a mysterious stranger who inspires her to live her life unapologetically is she a witch i don't know but the the townspeople have some feelings about back to night shift in the song she says in five years i hope these songs feel like covers dedicated to new lovers and it's about how like even though you're in a rough place now soon you'll be like removed enough from this situation and healed enough that the art you made about being in that place is art that can be applied to like any situation and i'm applying this more as like everything will be okay in the future even though it seems really crappy right now in the thick of it and i think sophie is that person for her that helps her to navigate the aftermath with her relationship with sam and to set some boundaries And I think her relationship also helps her have something she thinks that she missed out on in her 20s with like investing in friendships and because she kind of insulated herself with her relationship with Sam. And I do love back to Lucy Dacus. So she released Night Shift, the song, and then five years later released the music video. So it's like she's saying, in five years, these songs will feel like covers and dedicated to new lovers. Like she's beyond that now. Like she's now getting to have fun and make music video and make art about the art that she made when she was really going through it. How meta. <laughs> I love it's such I a good video. Yeah, idea, yeah, though. I mean, she had a plan. <laughs> yeah, that's fabulous. So that is Night Shift by Lucy Dacus and Cackle by Rachel Harrison. That's a good comp. (laughs) (laughs) I got the stamp of approval. Yeah. (laughs) So one of the things that I chose Blind Melon for, or one of the reasons why, is because lyrically, he's really impressive. Shannon Hoon's really impressive. Um, the album that came out after he died is basically a collection of songs that they sort of recorded. One of them is even on a telephone answering machine. Um, so, you know, they just kind of gathered anything they could. And on the cover, it's a picture of a tattoo he has on his arm. And that tattoo is, is a poem that one of his ancestors wrote. And he said, they just kind of found it one day digging through an attic in like a grandmother's house or something. And, it made such a big difference in his life because he didn't connect to his town. He didn't connect to his family a lot. And he just kind of was like, Oh, I connect to this, you know, somebody in my life was more than, you know, just a bricklayer, you know, in your young mind, this is what your thoughts are. He's like somebody in my, my life wrote, or, you know, one of my ancestors wrote a poem. So lyrically is just always really impressive. Um, you know, when you start really going down and looking at what, what he was doing so that's one one of the reasons why i chose blind melon and i chose toes across the floor it's one of my favorite blind melon songs it was off their album soup um and i'm comping it with 
Paulette Kennedy's The Devil and Mrs. Davenport. Um, one of the things to note, Mr. Mr. Poet here uh, was doing a little wordplay and with the word dog and God, because dog is God spelled backwards, but dog is a service animal and it lives its life in service. So he uses them interchangeably with purpose. Keep that in mind whenever you're you're listening to what the lyrics are. So the reason why I'm comping it is because the Devil and Mrs. Davenport is Paulette's story that's mid-century horror. I've been waiting for it for a while. I love all things mid-century gothic. Um, and it's, you know, 1955, a woman named Loretta is married to a man who is a very aspiring uh, professor at a Bible college in the South. And you know, there's supposed to be this perfect image, this perfect family. You know, she starts hearing the voices of ghosts of women who've been murdered. And he starts to see it as a sign of the devil. And it starts to become this contentious, like playing the woman playing the part while also hearing these voices. Um, and, you know, it, it feels a little bit like Carrie meets Shirley Jackson, um, which is, you know, fun. And, um, yeah. So the lyrics that I'm particularly thinking about, so he says, I'd scrape my toes across the floor, the same, this day's the same as those before. And though inside I'm feeling giddy, and in my mind, I'm comping this with inside she's hearing these voices. I'm always wrong for never giving myself that uninvaded door, basically privacy. Um, so I'll take a little glue and put together a new glittered room for you which is interesting to me in the context of someone trying to put on a 1950s wife trying to put a perfect facade, you know, so I can sit so pretty instead of sitting here, not seeing clear, just sitting here, not fitting here. No, things aren't fitting here. The thing that I thought was really striking in the context of the religious horror that's in Paulette's book is where he says, now I'll lay, I'll just lay my head down beside this God of mine and I'll let that perverted thought burn a hole in my mind. Oh, and if I can't lay my head beside this God of mine, then maybe the hunter's dog, there's that backwards thing again, called God could be my friend in time. So, you know, he grew up like we did in a, you know, just kind of a Midwestern I didn't grow up in a Midwestern town, but he just kind of grew up in a regular town, didn't identify with anything. Religion's always played a part there. And I think that that really connects with some of the things that Paulette was talking about, trying to put on a facade, trying to grapple with God and concepts of God and making other people happy with that and all of that. I mean, man, we talked about religious horror playing a part in <laughs> our religion, playing a part in a lot of these stories. And I think it will. Yeah. I actually just finished reading this on NetGalley like this week. You did? Yeah. I'm jealous of you <laughs> She's both. so excited that it's on your radar now. I'm so happy for her. I've loved Paulette from the beginning and I'm just so, so happy that this book is, I think, going to get her a lot more traction. Yeah, I really liked it. And Carrie meets Shirley Jackson was spot on, I think, especially with her like domestic stuff that she wrote, like, um, like life among savages and stuff like that. Like it was just like that. Yeah. She did a lot of, of research on Shirley Jackson and um, you know, it was I, the idea for that book actually kickstarted with her mom. Her mom inspired that her mom was married very young and, you know, she grew up in the Ozarks in a religious community and all of those things. So there's a lot of, it's a very personal book for Paulette in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So I think, I mean, I was hyped for this book before, but the song pairing and just you're right it's shannon's lyricism is just like so you know yeah he's a poet yeah beautiful lyricism i i love it and i that's one of the reasons why even though they only have those three albums i still play them 30 years later you know all the time yeah. so and i think it's interesting because like the lyrics don't have to be as I good know. as they are because yeah. it's it's very like a you know '90s like you yeah. know jammy. You could mosh to it, but like it's very yeah. deep and profound. And yeah, I just I find it so fascinating and so layered. And again, I love like having the the lyrics sort of not yes. match the viewers, <laughs> yeah, yeah. not match the the 
And so you could just be rocking out and then all of a sudden catch a lyric and be like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I posted on, on Instagram or threads or somewhere earlier uh, because we were going to do this episode, um, a picture of his tombstone because it has a lyric from his song Change, which, you know, he grappled with drug addiction. I mean, he'd ultimately died from a cocaine overdose, but he grappled with drug addiction then as much as he would try to kick it. But he had he'd put that. um that line that, that a lot of people connect to in the, in the, in the song change that says, I know we can't all stay here forever. So I'm going to write my words on the face of today, which is beautiful and gorgeous. But yeah. the line that follows that actually changes everything, which is, and then they'll paint it because it's sort of like oh. you want to make your mark, but you know that it still does like it will still all be forgotten, you know, <laughs> or, mm -hmm. or it's still, we're still yeah. so transient because like you were saying, I mean, just think about Shannon Hoon was this big rock star and, and a lot of people listen to his music, but 30 years later, people are like, who is that? Who's it? Oh, no rain. What's this? Like, you know, he wrote his words on the face of the day, but he also knew that that had a limit. You know, I think that's really kind of dark and beautiful. Yeah. 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 I I want to hear yours. All right. <laughs> well, this is also kind of heavy, but um so my choice um the song In Heaven uh and the book The Fisherman by John Langan. And so a lot of Japanese breakfast uh 2016 debut album Psychopomp or Psych Pomp, sorry deals with grief and anyone who has read Michelle's honors brilliant memoir crying in H Mart would know she lost her mother um, to cancer and she wrote this album in the aftermath. And so in heaven is a very sad song lyrically, but sonically we talked about it's very whimsical has that epic feel to it. And that's why I thought of The Fisherman, which is a novel about two men dealing with grief who take up fishing as a, a coping mechanism or as a distraction. And they stumble across a sprawling local legend that changes the course of their lives. And so that kind of juxtaposition of grief and mourning, but also like this epic kind of otherworldly you know, in heaven and thinking about the afterlife, um, which sort of comes into play in The Fisherman. And lyrics, um, these lyrics in particular, is there something you can do with yourself as I sift through the debris while I empty every shelf and flounder in the muck that I'll be drowning in so soon? You can't watch me from the banks then, turn to say you're swimming too. So that's sort of reminiscent of creekside horrors of The Fisherman and just reckoning with grief um and so that's my that's my comp in heaven and the fisherman by john langdon i read alike <laughs> that is that sounds pretty i i'm emotional just hearing that. yeah i think i started hearing <laughs> i up. know yeah oh, yes. really? i'm emotional just hearing that yeah i didn't know i mean you know i knew she the the author of that book was a singer but i didn't realize that that was the same until you pointed it out. So I was really glad to make that connection. I love that book. Love that book. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of my favorite nonfiction books. And I, but I mean, I get to like, a, you know, I was like, oh, I listened to the music before yes. <laughs> that book came out. I got to be one of those yeah. smug assholes. I was like, well, I was a fan since. <laughs> um, but it's kind of mind boggling how talented she is to have written such a profoundly beautiful memoir and also be such an incredible musician. It's just like, damn, yeah. <laughs> I know. that's a I lot. Of if you're a good writer. I mean, the potential is there to be a good songwriter. I'd be curious what songs you write. Yeah. Sure. Me. <laughs> oh, I have limited musical talent, um, but maybe in another life. <laughs> 
when I was reading Crying in H Mart, I remember I messaged you, Rachel, because I did not make that connection. And I was like <laughs> Googling Michelle's Honor and it kept popping up Michelle's Honor musician. And I'm like, I'm not looking for Michelle's Honor musician. I'm looking for Michelle's <laughs> looking Honor for author. <laughs> and I clicked the link. I'm like, oh, no, they're the same person. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, She released the book and then shortly after, I believe, released her third album, which I have a a read alike for but it felt like it was so awesome to see her have this like double success mm-hmm. double whammy <laughs> like where you know her book was a new york times bestseller and she also had a very successful album out so um and just it it gets me emotional you know thinking about what as we were talking about like shannon hoon and and leaving your mark her success with her music really came after mm-hmm. she lost her mother and I think there's just this like sort of like, um, I don't know, is it fate or is it like some sort of di- divine sweet afterlife yeah. intervention of of having her mother kind of guide her? Mm. I don't know. I like to yeah. think it's the latter where, That's you know, sweet. if there is a heaven. <laughs> That's sweet. Mm-hmm. But. <clears throat> Rachel, who's up, who's up next? Is it depressing or is it happy? <laughs> yeah. We're all trying to hold it together, guys. I know. We thought this was going to be laughs. <laughs> we promised you a good time, and then we pulled the rug out of out from under you, and we're like. Have you thought about death yet today? Like Barbie. You know, the person in that meme isn't eating ice cream. They're like crying in front of the picture oh, now. No. They're like, I came here for good times. Why am I crying? Also, the album is Psychopomp. I just wrote it down wrong in my document and then started questioning myself and everything. It is Psychopomp. Okay. I will keep the good vibes going with my religious trauma <laughs> pick. <Yes. laughs> I am talking VBS and Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. Um, VBS is from her home video album, which is, I think, my favorite of hers. Like, it is all songs about her growing up in Virginia. So she's kind of looking back on past relationships and she grew up evangelical and she was a really hardcore, like, Christian kid. Um, so I just relate a lot to this album. I also just really love albums where people like look back on a time in their life. Like Noah Khan did Stick Season, which is like he when he went back to Vermont and wrote about like being a teenager in Vermont. Um, and so I think these two are a good pairing because they are queer artists talking about religious camps. So I thought just on that fact alone, a good pairing. <laughs> Uh, VBS for people who are not aware is Vacation Bible School. I think her version of it, we called it Teen Camp. Vacation Bible School for us was when like we as the teenagers worked, and it was more for like grade school kids. That was like vacation. That's how okay. it was. Yeah, that's how it was in, in CCD. Our, like, we had yeah. yeah, and we had vac over the summer. It was Vacation okay. Bible School and. The teenagers would, for some reason, oversee yeah. <laughs> small children and be in charge of teaching them, uh, I don't know, Jesus stuff. You know, the most qualified people. Really. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, I've retained a lot of this information. Oh, my gosh. I wasn't just there for the free juice and cookies. <laughs> and I would say they're both about religious camp experience religious camp experiences where the narrator is kind of second guessing the religion uh in the book camp damascus rose lives in neverton montana this is a community that is known for their gay conversion camp and it boasts like a 100 percent success rate and it's one of those books i don't want to say too much like you kind of just really do need to go into it blind so i'm kind of dancing around a few things but rose starts seeing things she can't explain and she begins to wonder basically about the truth regarding camp damascus um, and when we're introduced to Rose, she is a character that's fully integrated into this belief system, you know, like, like one of the first interactions we see is someone kind of like, oh, you haven't read this book. And she's like, oh, no, I'm not allowed because it's it's got magic in it. And they're like, 
are you serious? And she's like, I can't, like, if I say something that's disrespecting my parents and like, I can't do that. Like you see the mental blocks that she has there on herself and how she's already like, I can't let myself be that way. Um, and Lucy as the narrator in VBS is talking about a teen camp experience where she was dating a guy who was not fully bought into the to the religious experience. She talks about like going back to his cabin, playing Slayer yes. to drown out the noise <laughs> of his anxiety. And I also love like after that lyric, she does like electric guitar, like playing Slayer <laughs> yeah. at full volume helps to drown it out. And it's like, Burr. I think that's so clever. And I think I told you like one of the, like there's a layer of clever there that i mean if unless you know slayer you won't know what what she's doing with that in in um with regard to their most popular song or album is south of heaven and i was like oh she's throwing layers in there with that reference i dig it (laughs) i love her lyricism um like she says like in the evening everybody went to worship and weep hands above their heads reaching for god which if you've ever seen like anything like jesus camp like cry night is a real thing where they'll get you like really tired out throughout the day and then have you listen to like hours of sermons where you're like just emotionally like on the edge and ready to make like all kinds of crazy decisions about your life like you're just like filled with the spirit you know yeah which is actually just exhaustion (laughs) (laughs) um And yeah, so she talks about how like she was like super Christian and um, she was dating this guy and then it finally gets to the point where she says, you said that I showed you the light, but all it did in the end was make the dark feel darker than before. And she repeats it again as the song like fades out, the dark feel darker than before. So she's done what she's been conditioned to do which is like point someone in that direction but now she's questioning like is that the highest form of love like did I do the right thing like I'm I'm just going out here pushing this on people and just taking a step back from things and, and wondering while you gave an excellent comp for this I actually want to see this as a book too you know yeah. <laughs> like its own book you know? yeah I mean you gave an excellent comp there's no there's no doubting Chuck Tingle's the best but um but I'm like, this This is a cool book on its own, you know, like if it could be. I would like her whole home video album, uh, honestly. Her songs also build in a yes. really cool way, which I always love. I love a surprise in a song, like where I think I know where it's going. And then you kind of ease into the song and then all of a sudden it builds. And it's like, I don't know. I think this might be my favorite of her songs. Yeah. I had yeah. fun looking things up going, what's VBS? <laughs> <laughs> What is she talking about? So <laughs> I learned so much. She's such yeah. a badass. <laughs> just funny because when she does interviews, she seems just like really quiet and introverted. Hey, those are the best artists. It's always <laughs> the yeah, it's always the quiet and introverted. As someone who ones. taught them, I know exactly who. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, then that means they're brilliant. So my second one is Mouthful of Cavities, and I'm comping it with a book that I just finished, um, Small Favors by Aaron Craig. And Mouthful of Cavities is a good example for me of how varied their music is. Um, that You can always, I mean, they have a style largely tied to not only Shannon Hoon's lyricism, but his raspy tenor, which is gorgeous with this it's a duet the song is a duet with a a girl who used to just kind of hang out at their shows and she wasn't trying to be a groupie she was like hey no I can sing and they were like really let's let's make a song and see how you can sing and she's gorgeous with it with his raspy tenor in this song and um and I love the video because you see her she's just this kind of little Janis Joplin humble looking woman who's just got this gorgeous voice um but I'm comping it with that, even though the intention isn't the same or, you know, it, lyrically, you can find whatever you want <laughs> um, or, or, or ways to comp it. But I also want to give a shout out to the word fiend, F-I-E-N-D, because I've always loved that word and he uses it. Oh, I, ha- I get so excited when there's words I like that appear. <laughs> 
But I'm specifically going to reference, um, see, I got a lot of fiends around and they're peeking through nothing new. They see you. They see everything you do, see everything on the inside out. And um, if you haven't read Small Favors, <laughs> the things that lurk in the woods get into the minds of whoever is in the village and basically make them chaos puppets for their own pleasure. Um, so, you know, they're, they're definitely fiends and they're definitely seeing everything that they do because they're the ones causing this, this chaos. Um, later in the song, he says, Oh, please give me a little more and I'll push away those bla baby blues. Cause one of these days this will die. So will me. And so will you, there's a lot of death in small favors, just so you know. <laughs> Don't get too attached to people. <laughs> I was like, this is a borderline slasher. Um, he says, I'll write a letter to a friend of mine. I'll tell him how much I used to love to watch him smile. See, I haven't seen him smile in a little while. Haven't seen him smile in a little while, but I know you're laughing from the inside out. And then he just kind of repeats that. And one of the things that struck me about this as a comp to small favors is that, of course, with these things inhabiting the minds of the villagers, they are no longer the people they used to be. They're now these maniacally laughing chaos agents. So they're going around like destroying property and murdering people in the village all while laughing maniacally. It's really creepy and weird. And I love it so much. <laughs> but I was like, these lyrics basically sound like small favors. <laughs> so um and again it's just this beautiful melodic duet but it's these very sinister lyrics it's just such an interesting juxtaposition i love oh. this song love this song i hadn't heard it before yeah. you sent it and i have been listening to it on repeat i love it um and I have the book on my TBR. I have it it's in the stack of us <laughs> but so this is inspiring me to to move it up because if any book that's a read I like oh. for this song I'm glad you like it I I it's such it's one of those little hidden gems in there you know again most people just know no rain they don't know like that there's such variety yeah you know to to what they do and also y'all if you're waiting to read small favors like I did don't don't do don't do that for you read it because i called it's good yeah, yeah i i messaged brian mccauley immediately going um i thought about you a lot while i was reading this book because then there's definitely a lot of blood. like erin craig does not spare us feelings she does not spare us yeah she goes hard and i'm like this is it reminds me of the return it reminds me of my conversation with brian mccauley and um just talking about how just the beautiful way that she'll show like someone God, this is gonna sound terrible please do not quote me or arrest me but <laughs> like the beautiful way she portrays someone getting murdered <laughs> this sounds so terrible and, this is a horror podcast like, we get she'll it. Have, People like, get it. an mean? axe hurling through the air with like the fire around them reflecting beautifully off the blade as it like <laughs> lands in the middle of somebody's chest and I'm like what that was actually really lovely <laughs> <laughs> listen we all gotta go if, if I gotta go I hope it's a f axe reflecting the flames you know what I mean there you go we'd be so lucky so I delivered on on the horror part right yeah <laughs> yeah and y'all, if you hear this song, it doesn't uh, sound like a horror song at all. But this works, I promise you. Yeah, I trust you. This my next one is also a little bit like, look, you just gotta trust <laughs> me on this. <laughs> like I'm right, just trust me. Um, my next one is tactics, um, and build your house around my body by Violet Cooper Smith. So tactics is off the 2021 album Jubilee. It's a song about estrangement, about moving a great distance from someone you were once close to. And there's, it's a heartbreaking song. There's palpable hurt in the song, but there's also a little bit of like edge to the lyrics. It's not just sad. It's a little bit like you can kind of sense a chip on the shoulder. And 
sonically it's almost like a lullaby like the way the melody is kind of repetition and as always there's this epic cinematic sweeping feel to the song and build your house around my body is epic like it's an epic book if somebody it's very hard to describe though um it's described as part puzzle part revenge tale part ghost story it spawns over half a century takes place in vietnam the book deals a lot with relationships and mistakes and lies and resentment and estrangement and possession um and it's a lot of like interconnected stories um the lyrics and tactics that remind me specifically of the novel so say say what you want dose up on fiction disfigure the truth while i walk life beating on aching for others with love that stops short um it's a beautiful book it's a beautiful song and it's again the novel is so hard to describe because there's so much going on i describe it kind of like a speculative fiction visit from the goon squad Mm -hmm. Um, because it's a lot of interconnected stories and you're like, oh, I think this fits here and this affects here. And, um, a lot of like beautiful notes about love and also people making bad decisions and how that ripples through time, um, which suits the song and love and loss and moving a great distance from somebody, um, yeah, you just have to trust me and listen to the song and read the book and then come and tell me how right I am. <laughs> um, no, I'm slightly obsessed with all of these songs um, <laughs> because it, it. I wasn't saying, oh, they sound like the Sundays to sound like, oh, they're I, I didn't mean that in the, like a negative way. I meant that in the, like a very endearing, I'm newly obsessed kind of way. You know, <laughs> it it's something yeah. that feels to me like a part of something I've always already liked and so it's like a new thing to add to my repertoire (laughs) yeah I'm excited I love that I need to add that to my TBR I talk about the book all the time because I just think it's such a like a hidden gem because it's especially among like we mostly are in a horror and gothic space and I think build your house around my body is more like speculative literary fiction. Um, But there are some like scary moments in it and it's just so brilliantly it's written. It's one of those books that you read and you're like, how did she do this? It feels like a magic trick. Like, um, and it's, I like that. Like when you're reading a book and you're like, I bet this person is actually that person. And this is how like, Uh And in the future, they connect to that person in the past and and all that. And it's just the way everything ties together is so beautiful. And I, but again, it's, it's so hard to describe that when I'm recommending it to people, I'm like, well, it's kind of like, (laughs) I don't know, you just have to read it. (laughs) So, and now I'm going to be like, it's kind of like, wait, let me just play you this song. And then you'll, and then you'll know. Oh boy. So I did feel like I had to do a boy genius song um, okay. because because they are they they're having their moment right now and a lot of people have heard the record. So I am going with True Blue from the record by Boy Genius. And I I struggled. I had a lot of pairings for this. I had a hard time honestly like pairing it down cuz I could have gone a lot of Rachel Harrison books and I was like I'm not going to do two. <laughs> and I was like I could also do my best friend's exorcism but i am gonna go undead girl gang by lily anderson this song could be interpreted romantically or about a friendship personally i've always interpreted it in the like friendship sense so that is why i am going with that i love undead girl gang i did a whole episode with bj colangelo and we talked about undead girl gang i've had a lot of people ask for like girly horror wrecks like what is a horror book that feels like pink like girl and like it is undead girl gang 
And that is about a girl named Mila, who is best friends with Riley. They consider themselves kind of amateur witches. And at the beginning of the book, Riley dies under mysterious circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so Mila takes it upon herself to steal a grimoire from a local witch shop and resurrect her best friend because she doesn't believe that this was an accidental death or a suicide. And the problem is when she does manage to bring Riley back, she also brings back two mean girls that died earlier that year, also under mysterious circumstances. Oh my God, it's reverse Heathers. Yeah. Yeah. And so then there's like rules about this. They're all kind of like zombies and she's the spell wears off in like seven days. Like they have like a proximity thing where like they can't be like so far away from each other. So she's like navigating all these like very like real world things with them. She can't have them like sneaking off and they're still trying to solve all these murders like on top of all of this thing. And she's also, you know delaying her grieving process in a way like this book made me cry several times um because like how did i this is amazing <laughs> i've never heard of it either and i'm like i want it today <laughs> it's it's a fun time i mean it is like sad like the the novel opens up like at riley's funeral and she's like I would, if you were here, like, you're the person I would, like, make jokes about how stupid this funeral is, and you're not here. Aww. Wow. I know. <laughs> I cried. So that is the accurate stuff, though, right? When you think about female friendships and stuff, like, that is so accurate. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Like, the, yeah, two books about, like, teen girl friendship. Like, I will take on supernatural forces or, like... <laughs> To, yeah. to fight for you um in the lyric from true blue it feels good to be known so well i can't hide from you like i hide from myself yeah. <laughs> a lot of yeah well, i know yeah. i i just love it and I mean, the boy genius was formed because they were such good friends like they connected on tour and I think it was Julian and Lucy connected first and like talked a lot about like literature and just became really good friends. And then they brought on Phoebe and just realized like they had such a good time together just talking about things and just said like, why don't we make music together? And so like it's a band that's truly formed out of this like deep friendship and love for each other is like the basis of this band that they're just like, why not make music with my best yeah. friends and get to like tour with them? You always you can always tell when a band's like really enjoying themselves in that way too. Mm -hmm. You know, the product is a reflection of that joy. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy how they're like they're just like we're friends and so we're gonna make music together and it's like just so happens that our voices yeah. sound absolutely gorgeous together like can you I, the the chance what are the chances yeah, yeah. and that they because like the first three songs it's kind of them taking the lead on several songs like twenty dollars is julian um emily i'm sorry is phoebe and true blue is lucy and they all bring like a different flavor and a different style to like what they're doing but even as an album it's still cohesive like the parts where they all work together and contribute like different things like it's just so good i did have a bonus comp which is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow by gabrielle seven which is not horror in any way but chronicles this which you don't see often platonic relationship between a man and woman over several decades and so many like ups and downs and through betrayals and through grief and um like there's a part in the song where she's like who won the fight i don't know we're not keeping score like this friendship is stronger than like the stupid fights that we're in in the moment yeah. like our friendship is strong enough to pass to persevere through that so that is a book that is literally just about like friendship even when the other person is like pushing you away or going through a hard time like still gonna be here i get that have you read that one no i tomorrow, have tomorrow, it tomorrow. i got it in my book of the month box when it came out but <laughs> i have i haven't read it yet because i read so much okay. for the show it makes it hard to get to the other things so i'm trying to make more time for 
I want to hear what you think about it because there's a lot of like cozy gaming elements. To this it. is why it was my pick. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been able to read it. So I've sparsed out my episode time literally in 2024 to allow me time to read some of these other things. So I'm excited now to think about that song in context when I read it. So yeah, I haven't gotten to that one yet um, either. So Y'all, I, this does not have to be on the episode, but I am newly obsessed with another cozy game. And it's another one that made me want to paint, which is weird because it's not what it's meant to be, but it's called fashion dreamer. <laughs> And you, Ooh, you what's this? What is this? What is this? It's like paper dolls, sort of, or but fashion. You know, like you just run around. There's no, you don't have to develop friendships or any of that bullshit. You just run around and fuck friendships and dress honestly. people and make <laughs> clothes. And you like the more people you dress, the more points you get. So the the points are what you need to be able to make clothes. So it's just like this perpetual cycle of I want to make more clothes so I can dress more people, so I can make more clothes, so I can dress more people. <laughs> This this would ru- this would take over my life. Don't tell like me what it's called. In the two thousands, because I like, oh, Disney had dreamer. games online. Like yeah. that's what I did. Like, dressing Lizzie McGuire and stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I I will literally like not do anything else. I'm with not my gonna life. lie. I, I, it was it a sounds, weekend. Right up my alley. <laughs> I will. It will take over my life for sure. And I do not have the time right now. I'm gonna say wait because it took over my life for a couple of days. I've had to put timers on myself. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I'm. I have zero self control, and I'm very. I don't know if I. Maybe I have a little bit of an addictive personality, but if I discover something that I like, I. It's extremely hard for me to stop and save it for later. Like yeah. I won't be able to like pick up the game and put it down. I'll be like, I'm gonna do this for two months straight, and then I will never pick well, it up again. But those two months will be just like lost to me forever. And I can't help it either because the clothes are all really cute. And you can pick like a s- massive variety of colors and combo- combinations and everything. And and you're and you're creative in the way that you put everything together. And I love that creative element. But I'm like, it's making me want to paint paper dolls. So now the, I'm like, let me get those paints back out because I just want to make paper dolls now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like obsessed. Yeah. And then they also have some Lolita dresses on there. And I'm like, oh, Fuck, I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. Cozy gaming, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Who needs other addictions? Um, well, my next one is a Rachel Harrison comp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tones of Home, which is off Blind Melon's first album. And I also look, there's a lot of reasons lyrically while this you know, that makes this a relevant connection, but I had fun letting Rachel know that there is also an Axl Rose uh, connection here too, which Axl, like J- Welcome to the Jungle uh, is in Black Sheep, which is the book I'm copying. Yes. Uh, not, uh, not Welcome to the Jungle. What's Sweet Child of Mine. Sorry. I use? Yeah, yeah. Sweet Child sorry, of Mine. Sorry. I was like, Welcome to the Jungle. That'd be awesome. I was like, what? I was like, yeah, wait no, a minute. Sweet Child of Mine. You're correct. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no, no. <laughs> but Axl Rose and Shannon Hoon actually grew up in the same town and Axl Rose was in high school with his older sister. And so when he went to LA, Axl Rose and like, it's like, sure, come sing on Don't Cry and be in the video. And it is amazing how much the raspy tenor of Shannon Hoon works so beautifully with Axl Rose's voice. And I'm like, how did these two boys come out of this tiny Indiana town? You know? <laughs> What's in the yeah, water? It's yeah. Wild. yeah. Um, so there's that connection in addition to lyrical connection. It's just yeah. so many <laughs> layers. Um, so let me get, let me pull the lyrics up. So Tones of Home and Black Sheep connect to me because Black Sheep, for those of y'all who don't know, I can't believe there's anybody who wouldn't know, but just in case, um, Vesper is someone who escapes her tiny town uh, and the religious cult that was there um, and her family and everything and just kind of went to live out a normal life, sought out something else and gets drawn back home Um for a wedding, there's a tiny part of her that's also a bit homesick. Um, so she's curious. She could have just ignored the wedding, but you know, there's that part in all of us, uh, your tone of home, if you will, that kind of draws you back even when you don't want to go back. Um, so that connected to me with tones of home by blind melon. Um, 
it starts right out the gate with, what do you think they would say if I stood up and walked away? Nobody here really understands me. And so I'll wave goodbye. I am fine. Um, very <laughs> Vesper. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's fine. <laughs> Peace out. Bye. Nobody gets yep. me. <laughs> um, and then later on in, in the in the song, it says, all my friends patronize me. And in the context of black sheep, I'll say family. All my friends patronize me and say, yo, hey, boy, have you found what you're looking for? It seems they don't really know me because it's here and it's what they can't see. I know. And I'm like, oh, that's the summary of Black Sheep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the book. <laughs> like, so um, I just again, lyrically, I love I love the way Shannon Hoon strings words together. And I just really love the admittance of that tiny bit that still pulls you back even when you don't want to admit that there's a part of you that gets pulled back but then you're also just completely independent and free with look y'all don't get me I'm out you know <laughs> so. the video is amazing too the video is so 90s that it's just like the best. <laughs> yeah. it's like such a like sip of nostalgia yeah. especially for me and it's so cool. <laughs> who 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 was in those pits? You know, those mosh pits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is wild. Does that see? And I know because I'm in my little dress with my little earrings and my gray streaks running through my hair. And I'm like, yeah, girl was in the pits. Girl, I I believe it. I mean, I can see. I go to like metal shows it now and I'm like, I think you. Yeah, I I mean, I we would come out dripping in everyone's sweat. I mean, every, not just your own, but everybody else's sweat too. And it was a lot of fun. It was a good time. <laughs> I did go, I was in a mosh pit once and I did go crowd surfing Whoa. at uh, the Taste of Chaos tour in Asbury Park, which was the used in my <gasps> chemical romance. Oh my gosh. That is, I was an emo <laughs> That kid. is iconic too. More Rachel Somebody Moore. poked me in the eye. <laughs> And my contact came out. Well, so you I was were like, crowd on the rest of the night like this. Yeah. Well, I like came oh. down and somebody. Oh. I mean, it's amazing that nothing worse happened. But um, I wonder if it's still in my eye if that thing happened where like my contact rolled into the oh, back. Oh, Lordy. Of my head. Oh, my God. Well, so you Sunday. know how fun this is. You're welcome for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the only time I ever really got into the. Got well, and to be it, fair, I wasn't but... doing the hardcore, like, let me slam into everybody kind of thing. It was like the pit was mm -hmm. everybody. And then the the moshing would happen in tiny circles within the pit. Um, yeah. So I wanted to, okay. like, me and my friends were always just in the middle of everything. With I mean, you're still moving around because the whole crowd is like a wave, an ocean wave. Um, so, you know, you're still hanging out. It's so much fun. Oh, my God. <sighs> Youth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't do no. it now. Now I like. There's like somebody who's standing a few feet from me. I'm like, exactly. Whoa, I'm like, I don't want people sweat on me anymore. Something about all of that has changed. Yeah, personal space. <laughs> yeah, or it's so loud in here. Everything's loud. Everything is too loud. Even in restaurants, I'm like, can you no, turn it down? <laughs> Can't hear myself think. That's for real. I'm putting a call out for like stores to even calm the shit down with music. Yeah. Yeah. At a show, like if it's loud, it's like I came here for this. Just out and about, like we don't need this; it's unnecessary. Well, that was my comp, and it was all good fun. And <laughs> you know, I hope that I hope that y'all enjoyed that third and final pick. Yeah, I I did, <laughs> but I'm biased. So. <laughs> like great pick. Wow. <laughs> um. So my third and final, um, Soft Sounds from Another Planet, the song, and then Night's Edge by Liz Karen for the book. So I just finished Night's Edge like a week ago, and I absolutely loved it. It had been on my TBR for a while, and I finally got to it. Um, I'm very grateful <laughs> that I had the opportunity to read it. Um, the sequel, um, First Light, comes out, I think, in April. Um, but Night's Edge is very original, mm -hmm. contemporary take on vampires yeah. that delves into a toxic um, codependent mother-daughter relationship, which I don't think I've come across in vampire in vampire literature before, that specific mother-daughter tension. Um, 
it's very nuanced and it's a very atmospheric book. It takes place. Shit. I want it not in Arizona. I always confuse New Mexico and Arizona because I'm from New Jersey and I'm like, it's, you know, down the desert. <laughs> it's hot there. Listen, anybody um, outside I of Texas is going to know what you're talking Arizona. about. Other states. Right. Um, <laughs> there's, there's cacti. There's the desert. It's like bright and hot and you can feel like it's it's i'm in western new york in the middle of winter and i'm like whoo it's hot because the, just the the way her prose is very strong that it's very atmospheric you know what i'm talking about um and soft sounds from another planet is the title track from japanese breakfast's second studio album um and it's just this like mesmerizing lush gorgeous heartbreaking song and all the lyrics like this one's so perfect that i'm just like smug about it i'm like real proud of myself (laughs) um like every lyric i'm like yes that fits um it's like about enduring hurt for those that you love um these lyrics in particular in search of a soft sound from another planet in search of a quiet place to lay this to rest Striving for goodness while the cruel men win, there's no part of me that can feel or hear it. And I just feel like those lyrics perfectly reflect protagonist Mia's emotional conflict in the novel as she's trying to take care of her mother, but also start to live her life for herself. Um, And I, I love the book. I'm really excited for the sequel. And... Yeah, I, I, I didn't both. even know about this book, too. So I love I love getting new titles from these comps. And then, yeah. Yeah. To your TBR to, that slowly mocks you from the corner of your office. <laughs> okay. Same. Um, yeah, the, I, I was very intrigued by this one for a long time. And I was really like, I get a lot of books, blurb books and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I had like an opening like a week opening in my schedule and I was like finally yeah. finally um and yeah it's just it's really special it's really original um and just the mother daughter relationship mm-hmm. is so you're equally like frustrated with the mother but also love yeah. her and like it's just very um it's just very like profound book but also like really cool and really entertaining yeah. um so uh, and you know it's hard, it's it's hard to do something new in the vampire space. So um, I really commend Liz Karen for that. That She's is very talented. absolutely. I'm so intrigued. That is new. I, I'm trying to think of any other example. Think I was like maybe in YA fiction, but no, I'm not. I'm not even finding it there that I can think of anyway. I mean, mm-hmm. And the vampire lore specifically in this book is like it's um, mm-hmm. a virus. Um. And so it's not like they're not like vampires. It's not like, um, you know, Edward yeah. Cullen or Dracula or anything like that. It's like it's it's like a different mm. take on it. So um, and I love like I've been really into like contemporary fiction and I just love that it like ha- takes place now and like it feels very like this could happen. And yeah. Um, yeah, and the song, the song lyrically was just such a, such a perfect fit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's my that's my final pick. That's, that's a good such Third a good one. Pick. Yeah. I wanted to add something to True Blue that I forgot to like. <laughs> no, circle back. Okay, circling back. I wanted to compare it to a song from her home video album Brando, which is another one of her like well known songs, but it's about her hanging out with this like crappy guy who's got this like big personality and like is into like old movies and thinks he's like so different and like kind of just sees her as like a receptacle for his taste like doesn't really see her as her own person Aww. yeah you know what i mean we all know that yeah. yeah um but in the chorus of that one she says All I need for you to admit is that you never knew me like you thought you did, Mm -hmm. like you thought you did. And so compared to like, it feels good to be known so well, I can't hide from you like I can hide from myself. 
much. He really knows how to do the gut well, wrench. Well, and again, <laughs> something that's so relatable and identifiable. Like we, as you said, we all know, like what that is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm like, I'm sitting here. I'm like, wow, we all picked like really great lyricists. I'm like, yeah, we're all readers. <laughs> like, we're all like nerds. Of course, we're like, you are the lyricist to this song. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, and they kick ass jams. These are kick ass jams too. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. not just great lyrics, it's kick ass jams and great book comps. And what a good episode. You had such a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. I was just coming up with ideas for us to hang out, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine too. Yeah. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Well, do we have any chilling obsessions? I do. Do you, Rachel? I do. Well, I want you to know yours. First. I want to know yours. Yeah. All right. This, you briefly talked about fashion. I don't know if that made it to the episode. If not, <laughs> you can cut this out. If it doesn't but make it, just my so y'all know, we talked fashion. <laughs> yeah. Um, my chilling obsession, this time of year, I don't know if it's this way for y'all, but I tend to like get a just a smidge of the seasonal depression um and so i try not to get into anything too heavy at this time of year uh because i feel like it easily weighs me down or if like in the summer i watch a scary movie i'm like ah and then i'm like oh sunshine <laughs> um, so i my chilling obsession i'm really into the mob wives aesthetic <laughs> which it might not be ch- i mean it's chilling in the sense that like maybe these women shouldn't be married to the mob but um i i've been out of like i've always really loved fashion like especially when i was like a, a kid um but i think the combination of like being broke in my 20s and then having to dress for jobs i didn't really care about and now having a job where i don't have to leave my house i sort of like on a day to day basis stopped caring about what I look like and what I wear and what I put on. And um, I've been getting back into like, I want to take fashion risks. I like, it matters what I put on in the morning. Like I want color in my wardrobe. Um, And so I naturally kind of been gravitating toward like texture and animal prints. And now just so happens this mob wives aesthetic is back. Um, So I've been really into it. I've been like, Anytime it comes up on my feed or whatever, or there's articles about it. I like, uh, I think it's really cool. And I think it's fun to have that kind of fashion inspiration and to, to try and challenge myself to, to take risks and to, when I get dressed to go out, feel cool and fun and like, yeah, and a little bit wacky and kind of not care how I'm perceived and just put on what makes me feel I mean, I, again, as a Jersey girl, I appreciate that, like, it's coming back in vogue to look tacky. So <laughs> I just need to, like, jump on it when I can and just try and maybe make it my thing. <laughs> so that's been my, my, my chilling obsession is, like, now I'm like, ooh, feathers, <laughs> faux fur. I love that. Very spooky. <laughs> I didn't know it was I, coming back, but apparently the, I saw great- the TikTok teens. Okay, are talking about it. Okay, see, I'm not on TikTok because I leave that to the kids. But <laughs> the kids, meaning anyone that's under forty, um, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I saw Grace Reynolds post about it. She's a horror poet for y'all don't, if y'all don't know, she's this incredible horror poet who's done like this wonderful, like mid century horror poetry. And it's just really cool stuff. But of course, I was like, of course, she's into it. I didn't know it was a thing. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I love your outfit picks, though. <laughs> I always think they're like, oh, thanks. Well, because I like, I have like, four occasions every year where I leave the house. And so I like can put on cute outfits at Stoker Con because yeah. it's very low maintenance, but on a day to day basis, I want to break out of the stained sweatpants. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Should we all roll up to Stoker Con <laughs> with like furs and like cigarette holders <laughs> and like bright red lipstick? Absolutely. Faux gold jewelry, like the chunky, 
snakeskin boots yeah We're not to play mario kart and then we can retake our kiss our grits pic kiss your grits picture <laughs> yeah whatever yeah that picture we took at stoker yeah everybody pulls off uh i mean you know we all love black tool but no one wears it quite as well as rachel and i'm like damn those are gold oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um i I have a brand new, this is a chilling obsession as of like 10 hours ago. I don't know how what time I did this in, last night, but um, I had the pleasure of chatting with Sally Thorne last night. For anyone outside the romance community, she's very famous for The Hating Game, which was her debut romance novel that also has become a Netflix movie. And it's just everyone in Romance Landia you know, knows her other books, but The Hating Game is what she's most famous for i've not read those books not because i'm too cool for school but because i just haven't but what i did read that i loved and wanted to interview her for was angelic frankenstein makes her match um and i was talking to her about it last night and before we even had a chat i was like wait a minute before we introduce you i have to know what's behind you and she had this enormous sprawling like took up way more space than the video behind her like allowed in the screen gothic dollhouse yeah i saw the picture <gasps> oh my it. gosh it's it's like the whole wall and she's been working on it for well over 10 years and oh so like the details inside like the library is full of individual little books like <gasps> There's like the laboratory has like little tiny candles and like it's it's called Blackthorn Manor. She gave it its own IG. So it has its oh. own Instagram account and it's Blackthorn with an E at the end of Thorn, Blackthorn Manor. And I am obsessed because she showed it to me before we did the interview. I was like, I have to see inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she she opened up the, the roof and the doors and everything. It has a like a garden. It has a tree house that's a separate element of the dollhouse, like a tree house in the garden. Um, it's this massive gothic sprawling wondrous dark creepy miniature world and i love it so much and <gasps> i just pulled it up isn't it Sorry. amazing and this is a project this project that was personal to her and had nothing to do with anything except something she loved and wanted to do inspired angelica frankenstein makes her match this is she was like i'm trapped inside with covid i'm deep in my dollhouse world let me write a book and then she just wrote the book like it, it, i mean it's amazing um that oh my god yeah. there's there's a carousel <laughs> horse oh that's like that my is... thing that's like the thing if there's stained glass behind a carousel horse that is like the most specific like niche obsession that I have that I don't Do you have. You see an why I'm for. obsessed? I'm like, this uh -huh. has been an obsession of mine, not even a whole 24 hours, but I am so obsessed. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. The details. Yes. Oh. So if you all are interested in what you find when you visit her IG for Blackthorn Manor, you will like Angelica Frankenstein makes her match. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, she gave me a tour on the video because I was like, I can't talk to you unless I have, until I see all these things. Tell me everything. And yeah. so she switched her video around so that she could like take me in through the house. And I, oh, I was oh so obsessed. My God. Wow. That's not, yeah, can I change my, <laughs> that's mine now too. What about you, Stephanie? Have you had a, chilling obsession yeah i've been on like a non-fiction kick lately Ooh. i feel like that helps my reading slumps when they come on to read non-fiction about like a random thing yeah so uh i have two quick books one of them was fashion killer back to fashion fashion killer how yeah. hip-hop revolutionized high fashion yeah and this Ooh. sent me down so many rabbit holes like i learned about dapper dan and just all these iconic moments like snoop dogg wearing tommy hilfiger when he performed on snl was like a giant launching point for the brand and tommy hilfiger himself was like oh my gosh like i've i've made it you know yeah. um so it was a lot of that and just learning so much history about this subject i had never like considered yeah <laughs> but i got that one through libro fm and then uh 
on NetGalley, I read The Age of Magical Overthinking Notes on Modern Irrationality by Amanda Montel. I love Amanda Montel. I loved Word Slut, which is about like um, the feminist like linguistics and language and then cultish. I I liked and I do use a lot of that like when I'm talking to people who mm-hmm. I grew up with. So it's like I always like learn a lot from her. But this was kind of our cognitive biases like each chapter was a different cognitive bias but kind of with a pop culture like internet trend so like the first chapter is like the halo effect and fandoms and taylor swift and like why psychologically we have these patterns and um you know confirmation biases and the ikea effect and just learning about all these like psychological phenomenons and like thought patterns we could fall into um, was really interesting. I love hyper niche things like that. Yeah, I, that's one of the reasons why I do love nonfiction because they can just deep dive into the most what the fuck like <laughs> is this <laughs> kind of thing, and then you find out there's like an entire world, a huge backstory, you know, and it's every five like page of the 500 page book is riveting because you're just sitting here thinking like this is the most hyper niche thing I could ever think of, and I'm so here for it. So. that's my my well through libro fm i do the like alc like arc program mm. and it is always like the most random like assortment of books at the beginning of every month that you get to choose from but i'll always grab like very random nonfiction books so like in my library i have a book on like the j crew empire <laughs> like, the rise and fall of prep and like a book on periods yeah. historically and i'm like why not <laughs> so those are there those are I my next that. like yeah do you know caitlin is it Caitlin Morin? I for, no, I'm forgetting her last name. But she does that um, ask, ask like she does that. Uh, oh shit! Ask Mortician yeah. channel on YouTube. Yeah, her, yeah books, I her books. Her books are fabulous and hyper niche like that too. And yeah. I just love them so much. It's time for the second tradition of the show, which is a final girl song on this very already musical show. <laughs> I can't wait to hear y'all's. <laughs> I picked, I feel like I had to pick a, a Japanese breakfast song <laughs> because, yeah, obviously. <laughs> but then I was like, I'm pretty sure I already picked a Japanese breakfast song. I think when we did our Twilight Zone episode, I yeah, think you maybe did. I did. But I think I picked Savage Good Boy. Um, but fuck it. I'm going to do another Japanese breakfast song. I'm going to do. Um, Everybody wants to love you because I feel like it's like a another like very like this one is one of her like more like it's kind of like a, a sexy flirty song and it's like really upbeat and I can just picture like if I were a final girl running for my life I feel like everybody wants to love me <laughs> and I could just hear this song playing as I evade the killer and ride off into the sunset <laughs> so that's mine. <laughs> Oh, um, I think I already frightened uh, Rachel and Stephanie with mine, but, um, you know, I'm picking a Blind Melon song, obviously, as well. And um, I'm picking Skinned, which is their bluegrass song about Ed Gain. And so <laughs> because I think it's hyper creepy when you have like songs like like kind of bluegrass songs like that in in a tense moment <laughs> on screen. <laughs> And so if if someone's running for their life and someone's singing like, I'll make a shoehorn out of your shin, I'll make a lampshade of durable skin, like it's pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's very scary. So, um so yeah, bluegrass with uh, Ed Gain inspiration. There you go. I love the vibes. <laughs> and it's catchy as hell. Okay. Well, if I'm following the pattern, I think I am gonna do a boy genius song. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Satanist. As you do, boy genius. <laughs> and I would say this is like final girl pairing. Like you are grabbing the person's hand. Like, will you be a Satanist with me? Oh, <laughs> sleep in cars and kill the bourgeoisie. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Yep. You I know love what? it. Actually, and it like every lyric changes. It's like, will you be a nihilist with me? If nothing matters, man, yeah. that's a relief. That's real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. It's a great album. Yeah. 
Not to brag, I did see them in concert for this album. They played the whole thing and like their their EP. How fun. I love when super, super things like that happen. Yeah. This was a good time. Yes, <laughs> I had so much fun. Thank you for having me. I hope listeners were able to cry and laugh and <laughs> and add some new songs to your playlist and TBRs. And if anyone else has any read alikes or listen alikes, like please let us know. We would love to hear. Yes, them. I'm. I would love to hear. Rachel, when is when is so thirsty going to be out in the world? Um, September tenth, and. <laughs> I probably I can't show other people and I can't send it to other people, but I can show you the <gasps> cover and have you okay, react. We'll react right now. <laughs> and uh, let's see, where is it? I hate that there's moments of the video freezing while she's pulling it up. I'm like, wait, don't no, no, freeze no. right now. This can't, this can't happen right now. <laughs> no, I'm just taking forever to find it. All right. <gasps> Oh, oh my, my god! I the love font? that you can't say anything specific about I it. I not say but... anything specific about it. I love it. So I'm much. glad that you oh like my it. God. Oh, I'm seeing the little details. Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> so that's a little that's that's a tease for listeners where they can hear your reaction to the cover reveal. I don't know when the cover is gonna. Um, we're gonna officially reveal the cover, but um, probably I'm thinking like late March, early April, mm-hmm. um, and it's out September 10th, but available for pre-order now. And That is an act of um, genius, whoever did that cover. <laughs> uh, just all the I'm so glad uh, you like it. Um, yeah, and uh, I should have thought of a, a listen alike for, um, for So Thirsty, but... Um, Rolling Stones, I can't get no satisfaction is a there good we place go. to okay. start. Okay. If you want to get in the get in the vibe. But yeah, thank you for coming up with this genius idea and for new books for my TBR, new music for my playlist. Yeah. And yes, yeah. thank you to both of you for doing this. And I love how much thought you both put into this. Like you really took it seriously and you're like these lyrics to this book and like hear me out. And that always makes it so fun. Oh my gosh. I, I was like, I, can't, I have to just do this. I, I put everything else aside. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, everybody needs, like, everything needs to be quiet. I need to have no other tabs open. I need to, like, listen in the dark <laughs> and, like, stare at my bookcase and, like, let things come to me. I think that comes from the fact that, like, we are of an age where you really, where you have to, like, burn CDs. Yeah, yeah. And make mixtapes yeah. so you really need to put thought into yeah. it it's, it's different than just putting songs on a playlist it's a different it's a different thing to make yes physical. absolutely i miss physical media so. sort of like you know yeah. i miss phone calls with cool people <laughs> <laughs> so that's why this is fun that's what this feels like yeah. thank you so much thank you and thank where can you. people find you all online um i'm at rachel harrison's ghost on instagram tiktok and eventually i'll post more on threads but i'm rachel harrison's ghost there too i am she wore black podcast on instagram and threads and facebook i'm looking just to make sure i'm not wrong uh because <laughs> i'm i'm having that moment um and of course you can find all podcast related things at she wore black podcast.com yay <laughs> Books in the Freezer is a bi-weekly podcast. We post episodes every other Tuesday. You can find us on Instagram and threads and TikTok at Books in the Freezer, or you can send us an email at booksinthefreezer at gmail.com. Show notes for this episode and all previous episodes will be at booksinthefreezer.com where there will be a list of the books mentioned and for this episode, yes, the songs mentioned as well. Do you know what else you can find while you're checking out the show notes? You can find several ways to support the podcast, including buying merch, using affiliate links, and of course, our Patreon community. There are three levels of support with all kinds of different perks. So if that interests you, be sure to check that out at patreon.com slash books in the freezer. 
It would also mean a lot if you would take the time to leave a review on the podcast app you're using. So like Apple Podcasts, just do a star rating and a quick even one sentence review is a big help. And if you are using Spotify to listen to this app, it's very simple. Once you've listened to an episode, you have the option to just leave a star rating. So big thank you to all of you who have done that already. It is a huge help and ratings help the podcast grow and gain visibility. So thank you so much. I'm Stephanie. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, see you next time on Books in the Freezer. Thank you.